In this tutorial, you'll master Photoshop's Blend F sliders, one of Photoshop's most powerful yet often overlooked tools. My name is Jesus Ramirez. In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about the Blend F sliders. Before we dive in, let's quickly go over the RGB color mode. Understanding it will be essential for using Blend F effectively. In the RGB color mode, colors are made by combining red, green, and blue, the primary colors of light. By mixing these colors at different brightness levels, we can produce millions of colors. Each 8-bit RGB channel has 256 brightness levels, ranging from 0 to 255. 0 means no light, pure black, and 255 means full brightness. Blendif uses this same 0 to 255 scale to represent brightness, allowing you to control which parts of a layer become transparent based on brightness levels. Now let's use this graphic to explore how Blendif works. It has two layers, a white to black circular gradient over a gray background. To start, double click on the empty space to the right of the gradient layer to open the layer style window. Under blending options, you'll find the blend if section at the bottom. There are three essential parts. The blend if dropdown, which sets the pixels you're targeting, the image's brightness or individual channels. The default is gray, which targets the brightness. Then you have two sliders, the current layer and underlying layer sliders. We'll start with the current layer sliders, which controls the active layer without affecting any layers below. Each set of sliders has two points, the black and white point sliders, which are at 0 and 255. Dragging the black point slider to the right hides the darkest pixels. The black slider is now at a brightness value of 80, which is the dark shade of gray on this gradient above. This means that any pixel with a brightness value of 80 or darker will be completely transparent. You can see this happening in the gradient black and all the darker pixels are now transparent. As you drag the black point slider further to the right, more dark pixels become transparent. The white point slider works the same, but it affects the brighter pixels. When I drag the white point slider to the left to about 170, Photoshop makes this value and anything brighter completely transparent. All the values between 170 and 255, which is pure white. Remember, the current layer sliders in Blendif simply hide pixels based on their brightness values. You probably have noticed that these transitions are very sharp, but in most projects you'll want the smooth fade between transparent and visible pixels. To create a smooth transition, hold Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac and click on the white point slider to split it in half. Then drag the halves apart and you'll see a much smoother transition. Now pixels between 129 and 207 will gradually transition from visible to transparent. Anything brighter than 207 will be completely transparent. Let me show you one way to use the current layer blend this slider. This document has two layers, a background and the moon photo. The goal is to get the moon to blend seamlessly with the sky. And Blend If is the perfect tool for this. Start by double clicking on the side of the moon layer to bring up the layer style window. Then, under current layer, drag the black point to the right to make the black pixels of the moon layer disappear. To create a smoother transition, hold Alt and click to split the slider in half, then spread it apart until you get a realistic result. Really cool stuff, right? And if you're enjoying this video, hit like now and subscribe. Now let's look at the underlying layer sliders, which reveal hidden pixels from the layers below. For this example, we'll use a gray solid color layer over the gradient. These sliders work similarly, but instead of hiding pixels, they reveal pixels from the layers below. Here, the gray layer covers the gradient, but as I drag the black point to the right, the gradient starts to appear through the gray. The same goes for the white point slider. The brighter areas are revealed as I move it to the left. And of course, you can create smooth transitions by holding Alt, clicking on the slider, and splitting it in half. Now let me show you two ways to use the underlying layer sliders. I have two layers in this document, a sky and a jet. Our goal is to make it look like the jet is behind the clouds. With the jet layer active, open the layer style window. Another way of doing it is by going into the FX icon and selecting blending options. Now use the underlying layer sliders to bring the clouds in front of the jet. Since the clouds are white, drag the white point slider to the left 
and watch as the clouds appear over the jet. Now you can hold Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac and click on the slider to split it in half and create a smooth transition. Press OK when you're done. Now when you move the jet layer, it appears as if it flies behind the clouds. Next, let me show you another way to use the underlying layer sliders. In this composite, I have three layers, a background, a person, and a photo of a hurricane, which I want to apply to the man. I'll first press Ctrl Alt G to convert this into a clipping mask. Now the hurricane layer is only visible over the man. Then I will apply the screen blending mode to make it seem like the hurricane is snow on his body. But to make it even more realistic, I'll use the underlying layer sliders to blend it in better. Drag the black point slider to the right to bring up the shadows from his body over the hurricane, blending it more naturally. Then I'll hold Alt and click on the black point slider to split it in half and create a smoother transition. Now the hurricane layer looks like snow on his body. And those are the basics of how the blended sliders work. Now let's take it a step further and explore some advanced concepts. In the blend ifs dropdown, you'll see the RGB channels, red, green, and blue. Behind the scenes, Photoshop views every image through these channels. If you open the channels panel and select individual channels, you'll notice that they are simply black and white images. I'll enable the red channel here. White indicates where the red light is present in the graphic, while black shows areas without any red. The opposite color, cyan, appears where red is absent. In the green channel, white areas contain green, black areas don't, and the opposite color, magenta, appears. In the blue channel, white areas contain blue, black has no blue, and the opposite color, yellow, appears. Now let's explore channels with the blend of sliders. From the Blend If dropdown, I'll select red. Think back at the black and white red channel image. Dragging the black point slider to the right will make the black areas on the red channel disappear. The further right you drag, the more colors close to cyan becomes transparent, while red stays visible, since it was white in the channels. When you drag the white point slider to the left, red begins to disappear, and dragging further affects colors close to red. Just like before, hold Alt and click to split the slider and spread it to create a smoother transition between transparent and visible pixels. Now let's look at how the underlying layers work with channels. We'll use this graphic that has a gray layer covering the color gradient. From the layer style window, choose green from the RGB dropdown. Now remember what the black and white version of the green channel looked like. The white areas are where green is present and the black areas contain no green so magenta shows up. When you drag the white point slider to the left, the green from the gradient comes through above the gray layer. And dragging the black point slider to the right makes magenta and the colors around it pop through. Now let me show you one way to use the channels dropdown in the blend if sliders. In this image, I have two layers, a foreground which contains a boring sky and the layer containing a much more dramatic sky, and we'll use Blendiv to apply the sky replacement. First, go into the channels panel and look at all the channels. Pay attention to what's white and what's black. Now look at the blue channel. The sky is completely white and the foreground is mostly dark. So we can use this channel alongside Blendiv to make the sky transparent and reveal the new sky from the layer underneath. Start by going into the layer style window. From the blend if dropdown, choose blue. Remember, the sky was completely white in this channel, so drag the current layer's white point slider to the left, and the sky will disappear, revealing the sky from the layer below. You can also hold Alt and click to split the slider in half to create a smoother transition. Press OK when you're done, and you can now reposition the sky layer. And if you made it this far, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm Mrs. Ramirez, thank you for watching.